like I vaguely I forget who was responsible that happened. I forget who was responsible for that, if, like who it was. I think it was Ross and Aaron of the Mel played Smash Bros. And like Aaron and Ross like convinced Danny that it was a uh, like it was like a mecha wish for like this like furry kid and that it would be his first <laughs> Odo would be to be in Smash. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was Blueberry Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and he like and, and he started getting he was so touched that he was like he was like actually getting to tears. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, it was yes. the ultimate gaslight. It was the ultimate gaslight. <laughs> yeah. See, it's hard because they. It's hard to remember all the time they gaslight Danny because they they always fucking gaslight him. <laughs> it's so easy to. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you feel like you, uh, ready to start the episode? Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. Yeehaw, we got us some Bush Rangers and some Bloodborne. Welcome to Bush Rangers and Bloodborne. I am your host, Smokey, and joining with me as always is my co-host, Spooge. Hello. And today is a very special episode. It is the fourth episode, and it is a three-man episode where we're going to go over three Bush Rangers in one episode. Today we are going to go... Reaper. A threesome. <laughs> yeah, a good old threesome. Uh, we got John Caesar, Richard Burgess, and Matthew Brady, and we're going to start with John Caesar. Mm -hmm. John Caesar, also nicknamed Black Caesar, was the first Australian bush ranger and one of the first people of African descent to arrive in Australia. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it is believed that Caesar was born in Madagascar or the West Indies. He moved to England and was a servant living in the parish of St. Paul, Deptford, England in 1786. Uh, on March 17, 1786, he was tried at Maidstone, Kent for stealing 240 shillings. His sentence was transportation to the pen... Uh, Fucking! I always mess this word up, and it's so good. Penal, some penal that he was his penal sen colony. <laughs> his, his sentence was transportation to the penal colony of New South Wales for seven years. He was imprisoned on Alexander, a convict transport transport ship that left England in May 1787 as part of the first fleet. His occupation was listed as servant or laborer. Alexander. Alexander arrived in Botany Bay in January of 1788. According to the Australian Dictionary of Biography, Caesar gained a reputation in the colony as a cons oh, conscientious, conscientious and hard worker. That's that's a kind of a weird word to put in that sentence right there. Mm-hmm. And I think why you never want to say penal is because it sounds like you're saying it wrong, but it, it is it is pronounced penal. It, it does sound it does sound more suggestive. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, that's most likely what it is because it it doesn't that's not how that's not how you're supposed to spell it if it's pronounced penal. I'm just gonna just gonna put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> the old penal. <laughs> But uh, on April 29th, 1789, he was tried for theft and sentenced to a second term of transportation, uh, this time to life. Uh, Caesar took mm. to the bush a fortnight later and reportedly was with some provisions, an iron pot, and a musket stolen from a mar marine named Abraham Hand. However... Oh. Got out of his, got out of his Abraham, his Abraham hands. <laughs> that that's gotta be embarrassing to be called Abraham hand than to have your musket stolen from your own hands. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. He, you know, he got made fun of. Mm-hmm. Hey, hand, you're not so handy, are you? 
I didn't have butter hands now. <laughs> <laughs> However, unable to sustain himself owing to a shortage of game, he began to steal food on the outskirts of the settlement. On May 26, he helped himself to brick-making gangs uh, rations on Brickfield Hill and was nearly caught. On the night of June 6, he tried to steal food from the house of Zacharine? Uh, Zachary? Is that uh, how? Is is that huh? another way to spell Zachary? That uh, Zach Zachariah. Zachariah. Okay, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> so the house of Zachariah. Uh, he steal food from the house of Zachariah, the colony's assistant commissioner for stores, and was caught by a convict named William Saltmarsh. Oh, fucking Saltmarsh is a fucking snitch. Yep. Fucking snitching salt, salt march. He probably thought stitches. He probably thought he was gonna get time off his sentence if he helped. Coward, yeller, yeller belly. Uh, and slips. In July 1789, David Collins, the colony's judge advocate, wrote, "This man was always reputed the hardest living convict in the colony." His frame was muscular and well circulated for hard labor, but in his intellects he did not very widely differ from a brute. His apparent his appetite was ravenous, for he would in any one day devour the full rations for two days. To gratify <laughs> this appetite he was compelled to steal from others, and all his thefts was directed to to that purpose. I like this judge. He's like, the dude's just fucking hungry. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's just a bit of a glutton. <laughs> <laughs> just munching down the food. That takes me back to the movie Matango, just like people constantly like just stealing the rations. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Caesar was described by Collins after his first recapture as a wretch who was so Ooh. indifferent about meeting death that he declared while in confinement that he should be hanged he would create a laugh before he was turned off by playing off some trick upon the executioner governor author philip however took advantage of caesar's potential as a laborer and had him sent to garden island where he would work in fetters <coughs> and he would and be provided with vegetables there he showed good behavior and as a result was eventually allowed to work without iron belts. Oh, they're no fucking nice. up. I, I hate to say <laughs> it, but he's already he's already ran away once. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's, they just took off the iron belts and it's like Dragon Ball. And like now he's all like even stronger. He could like jump over the, the yeah. fence now. <laughs> Right. I just like to think like immediately because I see that the next thing is supposed to second escape is that they go like oh, I, oh I, we can take off the belt now <laughs> so he's like unlock it and he just immediately just like run and jumps over it just like ah oh, shit <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yes. laughs> kangarooed us <laughs> right. Caesar was allowed to work without chains on December 22nd, 1789, he escaped in a stolen canoe, taking a gun. He robbed settlers' <laughs> gardens and stole from local aboriginals who spread, who speared him on June 30th, 1790. Ow, fuck. That had to hurt. Mm -hmm. On June 31st, on, on January 31st, not June, my bad. On January 31st, 1790, Caesar handed himself into camp uh, governor philip pardoned him and sent caesar in the supply e to norfolk island in march 1790 to assist dr constan according to his biography by july 1st 1791 he was supporting himself on a lot of on a lot at queenburg and was issued with a hog in january Next year, he was given one acre and ordered to work three days a week. Caesar became a father, having a daughter with fellow convict Ann Power, 
Mary Ann Power was born on March 4th, 1792. Caesar left her on Norfolk Island when he returned to Port Jackson in the Kitty in 1793. Caesar escaped briefly again in July 1794, but soon returned home. Uh, he also gained some notoriety during his lifetime for part in wounding the aboriginal aboriginal warrior Pimawog. Pimawog. Pelmawog. Pelmawog. He was. Pimaway. 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 Apologies for. Apologies for botching this name. I mean, I'll actually look and see. He was working. Oh shit! There's a bunch of ways you could say it. I guess. Uh, there's, there's a, there's Pimbloy, there's Pimmel, there's Pimmelvoy, there's Pimmelwoy, there's Pimmelwee, then there's Pimmelwy, then there's Pimblewove, and then Bumbleway, and if I, if I have to, if I have to pronounce it again, I'm just gonna call him Pim. <laughs> yeah, go on, Pim. Pim. <laughs> he was working oh, with. Pim. He he was working with. A uh, party at Botany Bay in late 1795 that came under attack by a group of warriors led by Pym. Caesar wounded him by cracking his skull. Holy shit. During Dang. his many skirmishes with European sailors, Pym is rumored to have been wounded up to seven times, with Caesar being one of, mi of the many men to almost end his leadership of the aboriginal resistance to the European colonization of Australia. Well, not the first time Pim's been cracked, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess he got super lucky on that one. <laughs> uh, Caesar escaped from custody in December 1795 and led a gang of obscures absconders in the Port Jackson area settlers were warned against supplying him with ammunition on January 20, 29th 1796 Governor Hunter offered a reward for his captive of five gallons of spirits on February 15th 19, 1796 John Wimbo and another man tracked Caesar down at Liberty Plains. Caesar fired at them, but Wimbro managed to wound him. Caesar was taken to the hunt, to the hut of Thomas Rose, where he died of his wounds. He was survived by his daughter Mary Ann Fisher Power. Oh, and that is the official, apparently the first official <clears throat> bush ranger of Australia. Oh, nice. <clears throat> first very first official one uh yeah it, it he's given yeah. the the title of first a first bush ranger of australia oh nice that's interesting too bad right. there's not more on him i'm pretty sure there is it's just that we'd probably have to like get some actual books Mm -hmm. that cover bush ranger bush ranging in way more depth especially since he's yeah. considered the first there, there's got to be a, a book on him at least a movie <laughs> yeah but there's no like media or anything on his page so i, I really couldn't tell you mm -hmm. but yes uh we are going to move on to richard burgess now richard burgess and this one, um, this this is actually he he is actually a just a bush range, but this this is where bush ranging his his bush ranging career is more of a technicality than anything. Mm-hmm. Because he's more okay. of a murderer. Oh. Yeah, he was I guess a notorious. We'll see what the difference is? He was a notorious murderer known for. The Manganopo, Manganopi murders, which uh, occurred on Mount Mount Gadapu. Ma, Mang, I'm just gonna Mount call it Gadapu? Mound. I'm just gonna call it Mound. Okay. <laughs> For the Mound, the murders, Mound murders, which occurred on the Mound trick tracks, 
southeast of Nelson, New Zealand. Born Richard Hill in West London in 1892, re reputedly the illegitimate son of a guards officer and a ladies champion, he became involved in petty street crime at age 14 and was soon jailed and flogged for pickpocketing. Two years later, he was sentenced to 15 years transportation for burglary. After 20 months of solitary confinement, he was shipped to Mulber Mulber Mulburn, Australia, arriving Mulburn. in 1847. In 1852, he was sentenced to 10 years of imprisonment for armed highway robbery, and he was released in October 81. He was calling himself Spurgus, the name of the New South Wales run holder he had attempted to steal from. He left Australia in J January 1862 for, for New Zealand in the Central Otago Gold Rush. On June 12, 1866, James Battle was murdered on the Mong tr track by Burgess and four others known as the Burgess Gang. The following day... Four other men were killed nearby. In court, Burgess boasted for committing nine murders. He wrote his memoirs while awaiting trial. He was executed in Nelson Gallo at around 18.30 a.m. on October 5th, 1866. Ah. Yep. Okay, so yeah, kind of like a more Bush Ranger adjacent. More yeah, than an that, actual Bush Ranger. He... he the only reason why he's considered a bush ranger is because he did perform he, he did reign in Australia for like five so five mm -hmm. five years yeah for five years because he moved there in 1847 and he was sentenced in 1852 so yeah he for five years he was a bush ranger and that's why he, he's counted amongst them okay got you but definitely more of a murderer since he boasted about committing murders instead of being, you know, a bush ranger. Our first real bloodthirsty one. Yeah. Alright, and we're going. Our last one for this episode will be Matthew Brady. Was an English. Matthew Brady. <laughs> was an English born convict who became a bush ranger in Van Damien's <clears throat> land, modern day Tasmania. He oh, look at him. He's English as fuck <laughs> in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> he was sometimes known as Gentleman Brady due to his good treatment and fine manners when robbing his victims. Yeah, of <laughs> course. Oh, yes. oh, oh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Brady, whose proper name was Bre uh, Brady, Brady? <laughs> Brady, was born in Manchester just about the just about the close of the 18th century. His occupation in England was that of a gentleman's servant, pro probably a groom, as he, was an ex as he was an excellent and even a graceful rider, uh, and perfect in his horsemanship. Brady was convicted of stealing a basket and some butter, bacon, sugar, and rice, and tried at Lanchester on the April 17th, 1820. He received a seven-year sentence of transportation, arriving in Australia in the convict ship Julianne on December 29, 1820. He rebelled against the conditions in Sydney and received, over time, a total of 350 lashings and punishment for mis misdemeanors and attempts to escape. Ooh, I wonder if any of those lashings was, were, was as a boy. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I have no clue, but I, I do not blame him for trying to escape these conditions already. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1823, <laughs> he was sent to the new penal sent settlement at Sarah Island in Macquarie Harbor, which had been established for secondary offenders and desperate prisoners. On June 7th, 1824, Brady was part of a group of 15 escapees from Sarah Island, who
who sailed a whaleboat around the south coast to the river Dwar Dur Durant and spent the next two years as bushrangers. Bush range. Brady was considered a gentleman who rarely robbed or insulted women. The military consider him a dangerous bush ranger after Brady's gang held up the township of Sorrel, Sorrel and captured the local garrison, in which the garrison commander, Lieutenant William Gunn, was shot in the arm, which was subsequently amputated. That, Dang. okay, that... They're just being fucking... That's just petty revenge right there. <laughs> They're just mad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're just <laughs> fucking embarrassed that they got fucking held up. <laughs> on, on April 14th, 1825, Lieutenant Governor George Arthur posted rewards for the capture of Brady and his gang of 25 pounds and a uh, conditional pardon. In return, Brady posted his own reward, stating... It has caused Matthew Brady much concern that such a person known as Sir George Arthur is at large. 20 gallons of rum will be given to any person that will <laughs> deliver his person unto me. I also condition John Priest that I will hang him for his ill treatment of Mrs. Blackwell of Newton. Matthew Brady. Caution. Dude, yes. <laughs> I fucking love this guy already. <laughs> <laughs> barely know anything about him but uh, gentleman robber is my jail man what, what you can't and he's really... he's leaning in he's leaning into it he's sitting in a letter like he's the fucking riddler <laughs> <laughs> uh, in november 1825 a description of the brady's gang of bush rangers was published provided by mr r dean overseer for salas Get gatehouse near grindstone bay 60 miles northeast of Hobart. Denis mm -hmm. had been six days in the custody of the gang. He described his captors as having no fixed leader, though the opinions of Brady and Doon are generally listened to, adding that they're frequently, they frequently debated and quarreled for hours together <laughs> about their future proceedings. Doon <laughs> provided provided the following description of the gang members. I can imagine them all quarreling, just, just a sea of oh, 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 oh. just all drunk ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so they finally like come up with a little, <laughs> a little a little like push raging scheme. But, the, but then someone else has to fucking put a hole in the bush rank that scheme and fucking start a whole nother argument. <laughs> <laughs> It all starts over again. <laughs> <laughs> Brady, called Matt by his comrades, was described as being stout, square built, and slightly marked with smallpox. <laughs> oh man, making fun of his acne, that's fucked. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Dune was taller, with red whiskers and pock pitted. Uh, Bird what does was. That mean? I, I'm going to assume that he had very deep acne scars from scratching his acne. Okay, okay. Bird was dark, tall, and athletic with the appearance of a gypsy. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> he had lost part of one of his fingers. McKinney... I got gotcha. <laughs> McKinney was shorter, stouter, and fresh... Com complexion? Complexion. 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 Oh, he... He liked his face. He, he had a smooth mm. face. Braun was described as being deaf. <laughs> we could, we could have, come on, give Brown more than that. The fuck? <laughs> Murphy was a little man with a piece of gold lace with a precious stone around his cap. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on with Murphy? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Cody was subject at times to dreadful stings of consequence. Of conscience? Of conscience, I guess. Yeah, conscience. Consequence, my bad. Mm -hmm. Brian, no description beyond his name. 
Made it. Hey, you got Brian. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 look, I done described everyone else. Brian was there, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, you all know Brian. <laughs> On March 4th, 1826, Brady and his gang of 14 attacked Mr. Dry's homestead at night. It was a new moon, so the night was particularly dark. A servant managed to run to town and call alarm. A posse of troopers responded, and a gunfight ensued. No one was killed, and the bush ranger <laughs> slipped away into the night. Three days later... <laughs> I always love the gunfights that everyone just like... Oh yeah, I'm fine. It's just, it's a kind of rosy of trailer park. It's like the only one who got hit was like Ricky shooting himself in the ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fucking. It's, it's literally the, these guys are too. Are, they're not really like hardened criminals, so they're too chicken shit to actually shoot somebody. They're just shooting in the general direction, you know, just trying <laughs> to scare them off. <laughs> 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 Uh, no one was ki uh, yeah, uh, and the bush ranger slipped away into the night three days later Brady rode to Tom Kitten's farm and shot him dead it was a payback for Kitten setting a trap on Brady Brady was briefly captured but managed to escape and swore revenge days later Brady and his gang captured a boat intending to sail it to the Australian mainland due to bad weather crossing Bass Strait they were forced to turn back at least they did that and didn't fucking die being shipwrecked. True. <laughs> After the sailing fiasco, one of his gang members, an ex-convict named Cowan, betrayed him for a pardon. Damn. Mm, man. On March 28th... Judas! <laughs> fucking Judas. A goddamn Judas. <laughs> On March 28th, 1826... In consequence of private information, Lieutenant Williams of the 57th Regiment, with 14 soldiers and four armed prisoners, made... What? Why? <laughs> Are they... What? Why? Why? What? <laughs> what? what? Why? They made the prisoners... They made the prisoners part of a bus. <laughs> It's <laughs> so like, oh, you guys are cool. You can get your gun too. You can be part of it. <laughs> Damn. You know that... I, pr I bet those prisoners didn't even try anything. They're just like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they probably they... all got part. We're going to get pardoned after two or something. Uh, they made contact with Brady's gang south of uh, Lauston. Both parties fired, and during the ensuing gun battle, Brady was wounded in the leg. The bush rangers separated as they fled. Two stragglers were caught by local farmers. Damn, that's got to be embarrassing. <laughs> Damn. Brady and four others made it as far as Watery Plains, 15 miles southeast of Launceston. On the Saturday, on the Saturday night, April 1st, a campfire was spotted, and John Batman and party went to investigate. <laughs> Oh shit! We got John Batman now. <laughs> fucking John. The goddamn Batman. John Batman. <laughs> oh my He's god. Fucked. Oh. Oh shit! Oh god! I lost my fucking place. I I was laughing too hard at that. <laughs> okay. Apparently, apparently, John Batman, grazier, entrepreneur, and explorer. He is actually Batman. <laughs> It's fuck yes. And he's just <laughs> We're gonna put I'm gonna have to put him on our gun I'm gonna fucking put him on our gunslinger list just as a like like uh, just I, I can and, and I, I can in a way. I, I can count him as a gunslinger. <laughs> well, let's get into let's get into what John Batman's doing. <laughs> Alright, uh and the party went to investigate. The outlaws all fled into the bush, abandoning their fire. Batman and his crew stayed near the campfire. During the night, Batman heard a noise and went out to investigate. He saw a man limping in the bush near a shallow creek and hastened forward to him. It was Brady. Batman induced Brady to surrender and return with him. The outlaw was ill and suffering much pain, and he did as he was asked. On Sunday morning, Batman delivered Brady to the Launceston Gallo. 
News quickly spread that Brady was caught, and the townsfolk turned out to see the captured felon pass by on horseback. Did he even have to throw a battering? Nope. Not, didn't have to resort to no violence, didn't have to break his arm or nothing this go around. <laughs> on Thursday, April 27, 1826, Brady and Patrick Bryant pleaded guilty to the murder with malice of Thomas Kent. The, two, the same two also pleaded guilty of stealing four horses from Mr. Lawrence. Brady was <laughs> duly sentenced to death. Yeah, that I'm not uh. surprised. I... Uh, Killing someone in four, four horse deaths. One horse mm-hmm. death was a hanging offense. Four, that's definitely going to kill you. Yeah. Um, Brady was hanged on May 4th, 1826 at the old Horbart Gallo. Four other bush rangers was hanged with him. Patrick Bryant, John Perry, John Thompson, and Thomas Jeffrey, the cannibal. Oh shit! Oh what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's f- bullshit. Fucking. Uh, that's that's who he was hanged with. Oh. That was yeah. Who was hanged with. Okay, Thomas Jeffrey. Yeah, Did Thomas Jeffrey the Camel. Uh, we we're probably gonna cover those later in later episodes, most likely. If I'm not mistaken, cool, cool. we're gonna cover all of those. Uh, Brady complained bitterly at being hanged alongside Jeffrey, who was, as Brady pointed out. An informer as well as a cannibal and mass murderer. There were multiple oh. unsuccessful petitions to halt his execution, and his cell was filled with wine, fruit, cakes, confectionery, uh, and confectionery, fl- confectionery and flowers from the ladies of Horbert Town. The Herald wrote of his death. There was a, there was a hush. Broken only by stifled sobs as the bush ranger knelt to receive the consultions of his face. Then standing erect, his... Oh, wow, you gotta speak fucking French. Better do you to the multitude and died more like a martyr than a convicted felon. Uh, one of his hideouts is known as Brady's Lookout and is, is a popular picnic area <laughs> with views over the Tamar River. There is also Ooh. another of his hideouts at Notley Hills Gorge with a lovely bush walk and, information, and an information board on Brady. And that is the legacy of Matthew Brady. If we I ever go to Tas- Tasmania, we'll, we'll have to go to... It doesn't say there's any another bush ranger that needs a movie done on him. Like, I mean, there's not much information to go on, but you can do something with the gentleman bush ranger, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. There needs to be, like, (laughs) Avengers of bush rangers. Like, even if it's not historically accurate, you just need to bring all these, like, lesser ones together in a big movie. Well, you what you could do is literally make it make a movie about all five of those men, and just it, I, people would probably see it as a little lazy. But literally, just have the last scene be the same scene, but in the perspective of the man that the movie's about. You know. Mhm. Yeah, that'd be good. Like, be very interconnected that way. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that is the Bush Rangers. Now let's fucking. Take on Gascoigne. Yeah. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> Gascoigne! You crazy bastard. I never talked to the girl. You'll still be able to do it, even if you... I just remembered him. <laughs> what you doing there, buddy? <laughs> hagging and wagging He's and so hagging. Or slapping. You'll be one of them. Hey, wait. Um, it, at me. it seems like you're 
you're one of them, dude. It, not me. <laughs> Hey, look at you. You're being a bit hypocritical here. I'm just gonna, <clears throat> just gonna point that out. Typical closeted werewolf. Oh, hey, excusing me, other I'm, people I'm being too busy aware. Waving. Oh god. I mean. <laughs> uh, nice. Let's go crazy. Got him. I'm big late. <laughs> Fucking damn piece of uh, shit. I knock him down. I'm gonna change it in a second. Ooh. Oh, no, I'm sick. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, the gravestone cover. <laughs> Alright, and this will be a uh, bye-bye. Bye-bye.